Hey guys, Dennis back with a brand new video. So today I'm gonna to show you how to install a convenience receptacle on the outside of your house. We don't have anything on the front side of our house to be able to run power to like Christmas lights. I really want to add one right here and our electrical panel is actually down in the basement right here. All right, so the outlet that we're going to be using is a weatherproof type outlet from Sigma and you can get these at Lowe's. They come as a kit, which is really nice and it comes with a GFCI receptacle in it. It comes with all the hardware, plugs, um, it comes with some tabs if you want to mount it in a different configuration. It has this nice weatherproof gasket and this nice spring return cover. Now we're going to be using one of these mounting blocks just like we use for the spigot. So we have a nice trim look out here. If I want to put my electrical outlet right around here, so I'll measure downstairs 13 inches from the center of the pipe that comes in for the spigot. All right, so I came downstairs and I measured 13 inches over from the center of the spigot. So I want to make sure that my tr mounting block outside is the same height as the, the one that I just installed for the spigot. All right, so I see daylight, we're good. I marked the center of the hole right here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our mounting block on here, trace out where we need to make our plunge cut with our oscillating tool, get that cut out, and then we'll get this mounted in. So I made my measurement for the top here. It's about three quarters down from the top edge of where the siding is here. And then we just wanna basically center this over our center line. So we're gonna use our oscillating tool because it works really quickly on the siding. And we're gonna cut to the outside because we need a little extra room for expansion and contraction. Now what you wanna do after you make your plunge cut is you wanna take this mounting block, the back portion of it, and you want to fit it in the hole and make sure you have some play, right? You wanna be able to have the siding expand and contract on either side of this. So this can be tricky to get this in pretty decent spacing on this side so we're just gonna actually make some adjustments to this so it fits in here really nice all right so this circuit is gonna be a 15 amp circuit and we're gonna be using 14 2 Romex so one easy way to tell which Romex to use for 15 amp circuit obviously it's gonna be white yellow is for 20 amp and if you look you probably can't see with the camera here it'll say 14 2 with ground all right we're just gonna run a bunch of this out there we can push back in anything that we're not using out at the receptacle box. They give you a bunch of different options for running your wire in. You can run it through the back, which is what we're gonna do, or you can run it through the top or the bottom. So if you're not gonna use the top or the bottom, they give you these plastic plugs to screw in here to seal it up. So we're gonna install those now. These are the plugs they give you. They also give you these little metal mounting tabs if you were mounting this to a, like an external mounting block. So one extra thing I like to do is I like to squirt a little silicone on the threads on these. And what that does is that a little bit of silicone that we added in there kind of goes around in the threads and seals it up real nice. All right, so we're gonna strip our wire back now. You can do this a couple different ways. This new Aromex, you can just kind of pinch a little bit with like a pair of linesmen's and it'll pull off like that. Now, if you're mounting the box from the inside and not using the ears on the outside, there's these two little circles here that you can punch out. I actually have a little punch tool that I use. Normally a couple wax, they come right out. And now you have two holes for your screws. All right, so we'll be using a strain relief on the back of our box. You can also use a, I believe it's a TA fitting uh, PVC and do like a PVC stub out in there. If you wanna do that, you can. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, right or wrong, I guess. You know, just don't half it. All right, so we got our strain relief mounted and what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed our wire through and I'm gonna mount the box and then I'm gonna pull the wire through. All right, and one thing I like to do is put a glob of silicone around the back side just to keep any water from coming in. When I'm doing outside work and it's actually required by code anytime you're changing environments, you really need to use some kind of duct sealant and it's like Play-Doh. Just kind of form it around and all i'm really doing is i'm just sealing out any air that could make it into the house from the outside so what we need to do now is we need to make up our bonding jumper here and that is the green screw inside of the box <clears throat> all right so you can use a 5 16 nut driver 
if you can get it in there. Sometimes they don't fit in. And you can just make a little loop in the wire right there like that. Put your screw back in and tighten it down. And what this does is it bonds the ground to this box since the box is metal. All right, so we need to make up the rest of our connections here. On a GFCI, you have a line and a load side and it will tell you on here, if you can see that, it says line here and load. So load would be, if we're gonna be running another receptacle downstream of this, we would hook that to the load side. So the line side is where we're gonna be bringing our power in. I want this outlet upright with the ground prong down. So let's use our Phillips and we'll get this tightened down. As far as the black and white are concerned, the black always goes to the gold terminal or brass colored terminal and the white always goes to the silver terminal. The hot, it's actually labeled on the back, which is the brass screw that gets the black wire. And then the white wire goes to the silver screw. There we go there. Now we just have to mount our cover and our gasket. All right, and then all we have left to do outside here, besides a little cleanup, is to snap our cover in place. All right, so this is what it looks like on the other end after we got our wire through the wall. So I used duct seal right here to help seal out the outside environment through the sill here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna run our wire all the way down to our electrical panel down there. All right guys, now I have to give a disclaimer right now. So if you're not comfortable working inside one of these panels, please don't call a qualified electrician. I am a licensed E1 electrician. Pretty comfortable being inside of a live panel. There's certain things in here that you don't want to touch, right? Besides that, anyways, there's many different styles of panel. This is a Murray, which is owned by Siemens. There's GE, there's Square D, you know, there's numerous ones. And there's different types of panels within each of those brands, right? So this is a main breaker panel, and you can tell because our 100 amp service main breaker is in the panel here. If it was a main lug, then we would most likely have our main overcurrent device somewhere else, like either out on the meter socket or elsewhere in the house if this was a sub panel. The biggest thing is you wanna be safe. You know, you wanna take your time, no shortcuts. You know, the stuff in here will kill you if you're not careful. So what we wanna do is get the cover off this panel. And what I like to do is I like to take the bottom screws off first. And I, I like to take the bottom ones off first so it can hang from the top screws. So we're gonna loosen the top ones. I just kind of press my arm against here. I take the screws like that. I normally try to open the panel just to make sure and see if I'm gonna like catch any of the breakers and just wiggle the panel a little bit and it'll come right off. Here's our main. This is our main service entrance wire right here. All right, this is coming from the meter outside. So even if you shut your main breaker off, you still have power on these two lugs here. So you wanna make sure you stay away from them, right? Looking inside of the panel here, you can see that our grounds and our neutrals are both on the same bar. And that's only the case when it is a main panel, right? And your breaker is in this main panel. If this is a sub panel, your neutrals and your grounds are separate. And then this little, sometimes you'll see a green screw in here that goes through the neutral bar or the grounding bar. Normally that screw's in there if it's a main breaker panel. If it's not and your neutrals and your grounds have to be separated, you won't see that screw or you won't see that bonding, that copper bonding jumper like this here. So I know from the way this is configured that I can put both of my neutral and ground wire for my receptacle that we're feeding on the outside on the same bus bar. And then we simply just run our hot wire or our black wire to the breaker. Keep your fingers away from there, that's hot. All right, so this is just a typical non-contact voltage tester. This is the business end here. You don't wanna to touch this and have your hand on that panel because you will get shocked, okay? When putting a new breaker in one of these panels, you wanna use the same manufacturer. Yeah, other, like a GE breaker will probably fit in this Murray or Siemens panel, no problem, but you really wanna use the breaker that is designed for the panel. So this is a 15 amp. To put the breaker in, you simply take these two little feet here, and you slide it underneath this gray tab here, and I'm gonna be putting this in this position here. Make sure the breaker's off before you slide it on and just press it in. And that's all there is to adding the new breaker. Now, we wanna look for a place where we can get this new wire in, right? So on the top of your box, you can see all these knockouts here, right? There's nothing in these spots. I, I like to use needle nose just because they're kind of pointy and I'm just gonna hit 
the top of that knockout. Take it and give it a little wiggle like this and it comes right out. All right, now for our connector for the top of the box, you have a few different options. They sell these little plastic ones. This is what I'm gonna use. So that just pops in there. I like to just feed my entire piece of Romex right through here and then strip it after the fact. Cut this down here and that should give me enough wire to run to everywhere I need to in here. And I always do my ground first and my neutral. So what we wanna do is we wanna tuck this in here nice and neat. So I'm gonna look and see which terminals that I wanna use in here. You wanna make sure that you don't double up wires. Now, even if you see a wire doubled up in here, which a lot of people used to do, don't do that, right? You really don't wanna land both wires under the same terminal. All right, so I decided that I'm gonna be using these two positions right here. So I'm gonna loosen up these two screws. All right, so let's get our neutral and our ground connected. And we're gonna use our needle nose pliers to guide this wire into the terminal that we selected. Now you wanna make sure that you see your ground coming out the other side of this terminal before you tighten it. So you know that you're getting enough of the wire under that terminal. Guide that in like that. Make sure we see the wire coming out the other side and we'll give it a tighten. Now all we have to do is put our hot on our breaker here. So we're gonna get it behind there so it looks nice and neat. We're gonna run it down. I'm gonna just put my fingers here kinda of like right in line where the breaker is. I'm just gonna give it a little bend. We'll strip this back. Now our wire is in our breaker. Make sure that breaker's off too because once you start tightening this, if that breaker's on, then this screwdriver will be hot. It'll have 110 volts on it. And if your hand is pressing against the panel like mine and you accidentally touch that screwdriver, you're gonna get, <laughs> you're gonna get a surprise, we'll say. Now we have our hot wire landed. We're just gonna double check. We have our neutral, we have our ground, good. Those are tight. Our hot is in, give it a little tug after you have it in. So I'm just gonna stand to the side, I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, and we need to check to see if we have power going to our hot wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch one of these screws on our ground and neutral bar, and we're gonna touch the screw on the breaker. You'll see I have 120 volts. So that's telling me I do have 120 volts going out to the receptacle that we mounted outside. We're gonna put the panel back on, and we'll go outside and we'll check that outlet. All right, now since we have an extra breaker in here, we can't really put this panel back on because this will prevent us from putting that panel on right here. So what we need to do is break this off. And it's super easy. Basically just take some linesman's or whatever you have, grab that tab and just bend it back and forth. And then it'll come off just like that. Have two of your panel screws in your hands. And I always like to put the panel cover back on with the front door open so I can kind of see where everything is going. All right, now I'm just gonna line up the circuit breakers in here, all right, like that. I'm gonna just press my hand on here and we're just gonna hand screw in to start. And then you can just go ahead, put your bottom ones in and Make sure you label your breaker so you're not wondering what it is a year later. You're like, oh, what's this breaker here? I'm just gonna say FRT, convenience, receptacle. Oh, we got a green light on. And this is a tamper resistant, so if you put your meter leads in, you're gonna have to push them both in at the same time, otherwise they won't push in at all. And we got 120 volts. We'll check the small opening which is your hot, check that to ground, just as an extra little test, 120 volts. We're good to go, that's all there is to it. All right guys, so pretty simple. If you're comfortable working with electricity and you need a convenience receptacle on the outside of your house, I definitely recommend doing this. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna show you how to replace an existing receptacle on the outside of your house with one of these weatherproof boxes. I have one that just has like these little flip covers on it. Keep an eye out for that video if that applies to you, but thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and until next time.